How do we see God? He's seen as this father, father figure, this patriarch, this man, right? So we can't even envision an idea that um, an all-knowing creator can be a woman. Um, for me, that's how, it, it just like from the beginning of everything, is how we, this is how patriarchy manifests itself in our lives. I can't make this film without acknowledging my own personal history of fuckiness, undermining women, being manipulative emotionally, uh, mansplaining, gaslighting. Men are trash. And why do you say that? Because they are, because it's a fact of human history that every huge atrocity that has ever happened in the history since humans fucking came out of the water has been perpetrated by men. We're so focused on women. What about the problems that men face? Most of the women don't even use their money to do shit. We most of the time pay just to get their attention. We're using our money. You know, we are the ones getting used here. Whenever they see a beautiful woman, they think of them as a sex object. Do you have any naked pictures? Do you want to come to my house? Woman is not for fun. Woman is there to help them make clean, make food. When they make children, they must look after the children. The problem is uh, women have been given so much rights. I wouldn't say I think Uti Wonka Matota I trash. I believe Uti maybe 80% men are trash. They are trash because they act like trash. I grew up mostly, we were called dogs. And now it, it just changed the term. We are trash, but not dogs. You can't generalize. Generalizing is what people do to make themselves feel better about themselves. Men are trash, it's, it's, it's not a thing, man. The abusers are getting a lot of spotlight. South African men are trash. That's who we are. And if we don't want to be called that, then let us change our behavior. Then women will start tweeting as check South African men are lovers. There is no South African man who can actually kill Umfaz Wagubo. I want to acknowledge uh, my role um, in oppressing and abusing women and children in our society. Some of it was uh, uh, basically harassing women sexually. If we as women don't look out for each other, then who will? Because obviously men don't look after us. We have rapists walking among us. We sit in dining halls with rapists. They are tutors, they are leaders in, in, in high positions. I can't educate another man. I'm struggling to survive. Boyfriends who hit things next to you instead of hitting you. And I think every woman experiences this who's dated a man. Men don't even realize it, that that's incredibly violent and it's scary. I think the more they, they suppress us, they feel more power. The society that we've built is one that says, I can only be powerful if I'm getting it at someone else's expense. Women must earn less than men because they are weaker, they are smaller, they are less intelligent, and they must earn less. Sexism and misogyny are endemic in our society. I know that I have played my part in perpetuating sexism and misogyny from viewing women as sexual objects to um, chauvinistic viewpoints and um, mindset. Get on the ground, man. Patriarchy. How would you explain to somebody else and what do you understand from that term? Oh, one has to be patriotic, you know? Now my engagement of patriarchy, I think, is diminished because I have this privilege, because I have this economic privilege. And also being silent in spaces where, as a man, I had the privilege of being able to speak up, which I feel is incredibly uh, cowardice of me. A patriarch is not necessarily a bad man. A bad man is a patriarch that is also a misogynist. When we see a fucker pulling a woman down the road by her arm, what do we do? It fundamentally boils down to power. Ultimately, Ivana does exactly as I tell her to do. <laughs> 
grab him by the pussy. I can do anything. Everything about the entertainment industry, it just reinforces and allows patriarchy. Every single thing. We must come here now. No. It was too powerful. He could make or break careers. A guy who produces in the industry once said to me, we know why you only played one role in a certain theater. It's because you never slept with the director. Patriarchy is witchcraft. It's like the biggest injustice of our existence. I have uh, exploited patriarchy in the workplace. I've exploited it socially. I've exploited it culturally. Women every single day are getting raped, kicked, and killed by people you know. I thought I was going to die halfway through. Mi nombre es Camila Canicova y represento al Departamento de Lima. Mis medidas son 2,202 casos por feminicidio reportados en los últimos nueve años en mi país. When I walk home at night and I am not safe because it is dark, I am a victim. I am tired of being scared. On a daily basis, women are raped and killed in this country. Carabo is many other black women. Carabo is all of us. There is no version of this where we are in the right. My understanding of patriarchy is that it's a societal structure that just allows men to benefit from everything at every point, uh, every time, and it allows men to walk through life much, much easier than everybody else. It's a, a system of beliefs that really like lean more to one gender. As a man, I'm born with like a manual already saying, I'm faster, I'm stronger, I'm better ability to make money. Patriarchy is a system that justifies the disposition in equality. So you'll have that discussion that's like, oh no, men should be paid more because that's just the way it's supposed to be. Men are more capable, et cetera, et cetera. That's the Western idea. And then you also have like, um, African men be like, oh, no, 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 um, women should be subservient. I don't know how to get us out of the situation because it's like, it's so deeply ingrained into how men in South Africa behave and see women. It's like completely scary. Patriarch is just that blanket death that you just roll over, it's there, and you just throw sexism, you just throw discrimination, you just throw inequality, you just throw power issues, all in that. When is this not my daily experience? When we use the word patriarchy, we erase what are important historical differences between the same society. And we also assume a kind of cross-cultural sameness, which is not always helpful because it means we miss the subtleties of what's going on. I remember having a conversation with a um, female exec. I said, um, how do you wear the mask? How do you actually detach your personality when you show up in the boardroom? And that's when I think the joy in, in the boardroom for me disappears, when one disappears completely behind that mask as a woman and particularly as a black woman. I do work sometimes in the rural areas. There's, there's like uh, what is called a community crawl where, you know, like a little cot for the community where there's a chief and, 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 and his cronies who decide on, um, you know, issues of the community. And women won't be allowed to have a voice in such spaces. They should come and sit, you know, at a distance. But it's, it's about issues that affect them. It's a system that was created to culture us to believe that men are superior to women. I'm very skeptical of when people say, well, this is not in my culture. Because I think, first of all, we have this idea of culture as being something quite static. So we don't start by questioning, well, whose culture, what culture, where did this culture come from? We create the culture, people, right? Um, 
some people may disagree with that. Like some people may say that there was a god that came down and gave us this culture, and this is how it should be. But actually, I mean, I personally believe that we create these things, and they change over time, right? So when someone says that, well, this is our culture, and this is how it's always been, and I always ask the question like, okay, from which era are we, are, are we judging it from? The challenge, I think, uh, it's, it's, it's the language. You, I can't say Patrick in Shangan, for instance. Uh, you, you, you need to explain it, and, and, and therefore, in some circles, it's seen as a foreign concept. Your experience of the patriarchy, like for me, the way it feels is sometimes like the dialogue is up here. And that's the big thing about patriarchy is people think you have to be the worst kind, you have to do the worst atrocities to be part of that demographic. As a trans woman, I've found that a lot of women are also so patriarchal in her, like, and it's misogyny. Yeah. Obviously, misogyny and patriarchy are linked. So as soon as you participate in abusing me, you're also part of the problem. So I feel like the conversation needs to go further. When you think about Sobukwe, when you think about Iko, you think about Sankara, you think about Nelson Mandela, all these men that history remembers are cisgender, heterosexual, able-bodied um, men. And where are the queer men? Where are the queer women? Where are the, the cisgender, you know, heterosexual women who were leading the struggle during apartheid? The reality of the situation is that men have really always been partnered with women. In every single important story, in every single moment in history, there's just been a really concerted effort to erase the woman's role. You think about fairy tales, the kind of books you were exposed to when you were in Kretsch and whatnot, right? So a lot of the fairy tales would end with, you know, the prince and the princess living happily ever after. A lot of people are taught your worth is within your relationship to a man. And if we just think of the ways in which gendered ideas work in our society, there is something about nature that that feeds into it, right? So, so we say things like it's natural for girls to like doing particular kinds of activities, like playing with dolls, etc. It's natural for girls to cry, and it's not natural for boys to, etc. The idea of natural differences amongst the the sexes plays a part in, firstly, how we think of gender differences, but also then how we think of inequalities. My definition growing up of a man was one who is away for a while, comes back bearing gifts. The only thing I understood about being a man was that a man is a provider. So the only thing you must do is just for you to go work and bring money in the house, then that's all. You don't cook, you don't wash, you don't, even if the house is dead, my dad would wait for my mom to come back to clean. But now she's also at work. I'm a big sister to three boys. Um, and just growing up and realizing how we were all raised so differently. I'm the eldest girl, so I have had to be a deputy mom for as long as I can remember. And that kind of responsibility, that kind of emotional labor and domestic labor, of course, all of that weighed more heavily on me than it did on my little brothers. They were able to not have to be accountable for a lot of the, the things that they did, whereas I would have to be accountable for myself and everybody else in the house. I judge myself as a man and like, I guess there's a certain pride in, um, in how you conduct things and how you handle things and how you, again, man, you're supposed to look out for people. Like not only for me as like my friends and my family, but also as a person who runs their own business. Like I feel like, yo, these are, you know, my people, I need to be looking out for them at all levels, man. It's my responsibility to do it. I was raised by women and even with men around and they took care of business. I think it's inherently patriarchal to just to, to, to think that. I mean, I openly admit that. No matter what society I'm in, I still feel like I still judge myself as a man. And I don't think that there's, um, 
you know, anything wrong with that. We grew up watching Stallone over the top yeah. with the arm wrestling, <laughs> yeah. Rocky, <laughs> yeah. what, like, Schwarzenegger, Terminator. Yeah. And so that kind of media and society gave this definition that a man is tough, a man doesn't cry. So most of the adverts, let's say, um, for soaps or whatever, and they show um, stay-at-home wives, and then they show a father coming back from work and stuff like that. So they show um, people at home and children and everyone that the father's always the head of the family and how boys will be boys. So you basically mean that boys can do whatever they want because that's just how they are. Look at me, okay, physique-wise. Right? And, and this is great as far as the definition of, 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 a, of a man goes. You know, skinny are a thing. Fat a buff Right? And we know what kind of power associations are made with either thing. Come on. Let's be real, right? The buff that's a That's a real man. Those, the, you know what I mean? You're in a club, you're going to step on his shoe a little. Oh, so shit. Boys and men are also under tremendous pressure to perform their masculinity in a certain way. Like, I was expected to play soccer, and I, I, like, I fucking hate soccer, <laughs> you know? <laughs> to a point where, like, an uncle of mine would, like, hit me, like, he would, like, go to a tree and, like, get uswazi, anushai, asinukori, like, ibali and stuff, because that was an idea of being a man. My grandma would say things that I thought, when I look back, were very pachaka. If I left my socks on the floor, she would say, hey, you're not my husband. I'm not going to pick after you. So if you think about that message, in a way, it was saying, Zwake, if you want to leave your dirty laundry lying everywhere and for someone to clean after you, actually, you should get yourself a woman or get yourself a wife. That's how boys are really raised, whereas women are always raised in a way that they have to kind of almost conceal themselves from the world. Most of the time, we do the washing, we do the cooking. Tell the men to wash and cook for you, you will see. Yeah. That man will leave the next day. <laughs> you come to realize, hey, that was done because I'm a girl, not because of any other reason, not because even anybody thought I'm capable of doing it. It was just assumed it's a given because of who I am in this world. My mom always used to tell me to be ladylike, also the way I'm expected to act around boys. Like I know at my school, it would be like, hey, can we please start introducing pants? I'm like, it's cold in winter. <laughs> Why do you want to wear dresses? No goals, it's tradition. I'm like, why can't tradition adapt? You know, even if we look at someone like from Hillary Clinton right down to your school prefect. It's the repertoire is very similar, right? It's like women are thought to be out of control, going out, outside their limits and so on and so forth, and need, in need of like reining in. Whereas obviously the same qualities in men are seen to be leadership, power, control. When I've got to be masculine uh, and be, be like uh, put on the behaviors that men tend to put on, cold, be men like not show emotion, the absence of empathy. When I have to be firm and I have to be truthful and maybe deal with a difficult situation, that's when sometimes I can have those behaviors. I'm loud, I'm expressive, I say what's on my mind, I just do what I want and I see sometimes the guys I'm around are kind of taken aback and they're like, oh, whoa, she's doing what she wants. She's not sitting pretty and she's not, you know, um, what she's expected to be. I, I think we, we often assign these roles to ourselves and to each other, right? So we go, you're the women and you will do this and I'm the man and I will do this. There's always hints to how a man should behave. Growing up, you hear it with your peers, you know, how you should feel about girls. Has anyone been to a boys' school here? Oh, boy. So you know there's a certain stigma, there's a certain thing of boys must be boys. And because there's no woman around you, uh, you delude yourself into this is the general behavior. My thing is that it's literally absolutely everywhere. 
even at the weekend, it's in the language that we use, right? It's like, okay, who's gonna get the booze? Who's gonna get the the meat? And who's getting the girls? Yes. Right? Like we all yeah. know those are the conversations we have. Yeah. Same way you'll accept in conversation, maybe your mate says something like yeah. shocking, yeah. like you know, yeah. like amagalala or shit yeah. like shit like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. You find men saying, oh, you know, there were so many chicks around, you know. You don't even think what that means. We need to also just interrogate our languages and how our languages just like perpetuate ideas of patriarchy. And to see the beauty of that woman who have actually passed away, it only tarnishes the integrity of real men. What is striking about the last two sets of women who really did grab attention was that they were both beautiful. If we look at Riva Stenkamp, who was murdered by Oscar Pistorius, we look at um, Gerabo Mukwena, what they both have in common is they're very lovely looking women. So the rest of the time, if you're ordinary looking, it's just not an issue. So I think that's why it's also really important to look at why is it making news now and who is the victim? Because the victims that we choose to pay attention to in the public domain are obviously reflecting something about us. I have taught young women for almost 10 years and often I say in a classroom, uh, why would you change your name? And, and they look absolutely quite surprised and say, well, it's what's expected. And it's an expression of love. It's interesting how, you know, women are socialized into believing that love is sacrifice. Love is about giving something of yourself, whether that's your virginity, which is taken, your name, etc. Mina inkinga enye futhi mina ngibo na yone ubuti eskasi nsa manje fele askuli swa like kabasa alibo itu enzi nso ngena mama ngena baba so enyi into na chamanto mazana utando lo labo baba tu suge singal cholang so makfige enyi into ta igienza la wale eziyenza ubona ngachu utando lento le. How do we not link power with rewarding bad behavior? I mean, and it starts at a very, very young age. A boy hits a girl in school. Like young kids hit, hit each other. I don't know, when I was growing up, it was that thing of, that means he likes her, right? So what that teaches both parties is that the boy is rewarded for expressing liking but it's not told that that's a bad way to do it. It's just like a kid, when they're doing something wrong, they wrong. I was hit as a kid, right? And what we always say is that, hey, I was hit and here I am, you know? But increasingly, the violence, it becomes a means of coercion right there and then. A child is taught that to have you do act my way, you need to be hit. The social entity in a bantu season is kumba. Ngaga bi bhum, au sugi. Look at our country's history. Look at how men have been utilized as like machinery in the construction of like an exploitative capitalist system, right? Women were literally like beaten down, sent to the mines, like exploited, like removed from families. And then if you grow up in a household where like your father's never there and you yourself are a man and you have no male role model to look at. And when your father does come home, he beats his woman as a way to like unleash the violence that he's experiencing in a different capacity. I'm not justifying it, but I'm just saying like, how can we be surprised that this is what we dealt with now with like crazy rape statistics in this country? And if the rape statistics are that high, imagine the emotional abuse that is going on. It is the truth that we come from a violent past. Citizen disobediency was met with violence and brutal violence from the former government of apartheid. Amongst the men who took the test in our study, there were high levels of depressions that were shown. And this is caused by high levels of childhood trauma amongst men. And these childhood traumas, they go undetected and also untreated. <laughs> from circumcision, whatever, 
they teach them these roles. Mababu ya baso ba amato. Tangi bego ba fan. So ba ba bun ba ba chako chake le ayenzu wa lenzu. Kusuga bu hibo. Most of the time when men are violent, it's it's just referring back to oh boys will be boys. There's no biological thing or scientific thing that says that men have more instinct to be violent. That's all yeah, no, cultural no. constructs. I think Nabo is not good to do your care to put in full good control. But Ekaya, Ubaba, he's the head of the house. So men grow up like that, Guti, like I'm the man, so you have to listen to me. A guy was raised in a broken family. He saw that thing by Yanzagumamaki. So he would teach his peers this this is how he treats a woman. So what are you saying then? Your an understanding of love and where you've come from, you've seen love being abusive, so you allow it to happen to you? We do allow it to happen to <sighs> us. We've seen it in the house. My dad beats my mom, so I'll also accept a boyfriend that beats me up. It's like that. I went to school with somebody who whose mother was known to be beaten by her father, and everyone knew about it. It becomes gossip in those spaces, though, too, because money kind of masks that. All of their kids became severely depressed in their lives later on. I don't think they're happy still. They're really messed up kids, basically because they saw, they saw their mom being treated like that, um, but also nobody stepped in, people to whisper about it. That's the private school way of doing things, I guess. Now, on the issue of the contradictions of patriarchy, right? The idea that men are, you know, they know it all, and a man can confidently stand up and speak bullshit, and everybody knows he's speaking bullshit. And he has no issues, like just being there and opening his mouth, running his mouth, you know, which is often a leeway that women are given. This idea, you know, you are capable and whatnot, whatnot. But then there's also this thing about you don't have self-control. You can't even control yourself. Somebody else is there minding her own business, not even dressed for you. Didn't even wake up in the morning thinking of you, but you're not going to be able to control yourself. And I think to show, to reveal these contradictions more is also very, very important, right? I don't think we do that enough. One thing was said by Oliver Tamba a long time ago. The oppressors, they can only oppress for so long before they are oppressed themselves. So what that means is that I am weak. I can feel it in me that I'm weak. But this system that I am part of, it says, no, 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 because of your gender, you cannot show that weakness. From my young age, when I was brought up, I was taught that when you are in a relationship, as a man, you don't have to be soft every time. Because uh, if uh, a woman so see the weak side of you, you will manipulate you based on your weak points. Well, personally, I think they're evil like that. They, they don't have self-confidence. So now, because they don't have it, they want, want to feel the same, you understand? As broken as he is and trying to hide behind closed doors. I know him. I know he's that monster. So my peculiar advocate to men out there is never hesitate to discipline your, your wives, you see. A good sparking won't kill them. It will, in fact, save their lives, you see. A good what? A good sparking won't uh, kill them. There is no reason enough to beat anybody. Whether it's a man, it's a child, there is just no reason enough because when you do that, you normalize violence. I 
I think God created us in a way that we're too patient, we're too loving, we're too soft. And we, we believe in second chances, not even second chances, but million yeah, chances. chances. <laughs> You understand? Yeah. But what we are saying is that we are saying 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 that we are we are saying that 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 we are so we are raised in a community whereby we saw that as a normal thing, that okay, fine. So if I'm having an argument at home with, with my woman, for me to end that argument, I need to beat her up. In our culture as black people, most Africans, patriarchy is a thing. So when you feel like a woman is overruling you, you'll feel a sense of, um, I'm, I'm less of a man. We don't have a lot of repertoire behaviors in um, dealing with our women. So obviously the first thing that you're gonna do is hit your woman. Even when you walk through Johannesburg CBD, you are constantly reminded of the crisis of masculinity in this country just by looking at the pay stops on every single wall of penis enlargement. Call Dr. Love what what for pills to make your penis bigger, to give, make you more potent sexually, etc. Like that is a constant reminder of like, the crisis of masculinity in this country. And like, you can't escape that reminder. So don't come and tell me that you don't know that there's, a, that there's like a, a crisis in the country. Our walls are telling us every single day. We're doing a study on intimate partner violence. So the men who participated in the study, about uh, 2,600 of them, 56% of them actually self-reported to have used violence against women in the last 12 months. Now, these numbers are alarming because they are double that of our national numbers here in South Africa. Middle-class men they have a sense of entitlement, that things should always go their way. And when they don't, they respond violently. Whereas, let's say for poor or more, or more working class men, they're shut out of those kinds of masculinist domination fantasies. They sit on the bottom of the heap. You know, one might be able to argue that perhaps their sense of, of, of violence comes from a powerlessness. You're the only person I have a little bit of power over in the world, therefore I should still be able to assert it so that I don't have to admit that I, as a man, have no standing as a man in the world. Politically, um, violence is uh, a face of a black woman. Just as poverty has a face of a black man. Violence happens in white communities, but it's hidden. Just leave oh, us alone. So? You can't come here and be Is that so? Things like violence are awfully working class. They're awfully poor. And I think, you know, it's easy if you're middle class to hide a lot of it. You can go to private hospitals, you can call private security, you can keep it behind closed doors. And I think that is what happens because it does bring you down in terms of your social standing. White women are responding on the basis they feel white men in the new South Africa don't get jobs, they don't get promoted, they're losing out to affirmative action and therefore there's a need to defend and protect them. And there you're seeing racial solidarity rather than necessarily gender solidarity happening. There's so many structures that actually endorse violence as a way of being, you know, from like the state being what it is, the justice system being what it is. They are messages of endorsement for violence in the society every single day. 
Kola has this quote uh, where she says, um, in South Africa, rape, it isn't a moment, but it's a language. And that's an interesting way to understand what you guys have been saying about it being intergenerational, because it's not about the individual so much as it is the violence of the daily existence in South Africa. It's just kind of how we've come to communicate with each other. It's just how people are born into this way of communicating with each other. I grew up in rural KZN and there was one incident where a guy was telling us about um, how he went out to a tavern. There's this word called ukhola. Ukhola is like to earn, but it refers to, um, I mean, hooking up with someone in the club. But like he's telling the story to this group of guys, you know, like we all sitting there. And I mean, I'm ashamed to say this and to say that I didn't do anything, but he, 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 like, and very confidently told us that he went to the girl's house, he fetched her, he slapped her, he dragged her to his place, and they had sex. And to them, that was not rape, that was sex. And another example, when I was younger, there was a guy who lived down the road. I'd always see him pulling a girl to his house, like, in the middle of the day, broad daylight, you know. And the girl would be like, hey, I'm phony. And like, he'd be pulling her. Like, there was nothing sort of like out of the ordinary about that. I feel like South Africans have a difficulty contextualizing rape mm. and what it actually is. Not to make excuses for men, like, it's still like, it's fucky. But there's a huge problem with how we contextualize rape and what it is in our heads. Oh, definitions of rape are way too narrow. We understand rape to be like a random person coming and having sex with us involuntarily, right? Or without consent. And I think that really erases a lot of the like intimate partner rape that happens or like revenge rape that happens as well in like relationships, basically. I think also it's just our understandings of consent, the idea of enthusiastic consent. When I think about even just the way people speak about sex all the time, the way we were taught about sex and the messages about sex that we get. Most of what I was socialized in, I'd never heard the word consent even mentioned. The idea that sleeping with someone once doesn't give you like a lifetime guarantee. The idea that being in a relationship with someone is, is not a guarantee for sex. You were taught and told as a boy that a woman will play hard to get and if, if you're a good game player as a man, you get her to change her no into yes. It's those little things that, when all put together, makes men think that uh, it's always a fair game when it comes to women. And our society has, has put it out there, there are no consequences even with the justice system, even with families, how they deal with rape within the family, um, how people basically shunt and disputes with complete uh, disgust the idea of a rape within a marriage. God said, be strong as a woman and be courageous. Yes. Don't fear anything. If you surrender yourself to me, I'll protect you from the, from the wolf, from jackals. I'll surround you with my, my angels will surround you. Why are you not protecting us from the time we have been raped? You are a creature of habit. You are conditioned from your upbringing. Fundamentally, your you know that it's yes. wrong. But, it made you feel but, but a certain but, but way. But it'll make everyone, you feel a certain yes, way when it happens you to you. Way, but if, you should go. If, if, if everyone in your circle normalizes Normalize abuse, that, right. then the reality is abuse becomes you normal to you. To
Ah, ma mère n'a qu'une table sur Yisho. Ma femme n'a pas touché qu'un tas de choses. Ma mère n'a pas touché qu'un tas de choses. Ma mère n'a pas touché qu'un tas de choses. Ma mère n'a pas touché qu'un tas de choses. Ma mère n'a pas touché qu'un tas de choses. Ma mère n'a don't just smack. It starts mentally and emotionally. So by the time this guy is laying hands on her, the reality is she is wholeheartedly owned by this person. If you can, in your own relationship, in a healthy relationship, say, I want out, but you still don't leave. Can you imagine this person who has been subjected to being dehumanized and degraded? Every single day, now you're saying to her, but you've got the choice, just leave. No. I agree with everything that is being said here, young child. But the physicality of it, you're being deformed, Zofa, if you stay in this space. I can't accept that. Women are dying every day, bro. Women are dying every day. I can't accept that. No, no, no. It's like, no, but it's society. You know what my problem with what you're saying is? You're saying, you're looking at the symptom and not the problem. You're not looking at the cause, you're looking at the symptom and you're going, but if, in fact, what you're doing right now is you're saying, but why didn't she do something yeah, differently? Yeah, yeah. And, and nah, I can't agree with that. Often when we talk about why women stay, um, some people will tell you about it is for material reasons they cannot afford and whatnot, right? We also don't take into account how women have been raised to be taught that we are long-suffering to make a relationship work you have to suffer. Mm. There's a saying, translated, it would be a woman holds the knife on the sharp end, right? This is what you've been socialized. You don't see even the possibility of making a choice to leave. Where are you going to go? 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 The challenge I'm having is Sometimes we can center it around Lobola. And I don't think it's that. I think let's go back to Pachaki, to those mm -hmm. tendencies, because mm -hmm. at 17, there was no Lobola. I and two friends forced a girl, raped her. Uh, there was no Lobola at all. These young men are already oh. having these, performing the masculinity, maybe because they have this entitlement, which comes from this animal called Pachaki. Within a patriarchal system, the woman's body is not her own. So if you think about it, it's kind of like you're an object. So if you're buying uh, a can of Coke and the can of Coke you know, has an opening with it, which is a mouth and says, look, you can't consume me anymore. Um, obviously, you're going to get very, very frustrated because you've bought this and it's an object, you know, for your satisfaction. And so that's the same thing that, um, you know, black women experience or women experience within a patriarchal society. And so when you say, no, I choose to give consent um, of who I am intimate with, um, within that setting, you know, it doesn't work because men feel entitled to your body. And that's why they exercise power over you. Rape is about power. And also, you know, the killing of, you know, um, queer women, um, whether it's lesbian women, whether it's trans women, is also around male entitlement to women's body. I found that because I've transitioned, because now we're talking patriarchy, that is a system that says men are better than women. That's just simply put, simply. So because of transition, I've found people who question my reasons of transition because they're like, why would you go from a position of privilege to wanting to be a woman? And then they try to like actually be violent, physically violent just because I chose to be a woman. Like you see how linked it is when it happened like that, where it's like, you're hitting me and your only approach is to subjugate me now because you're finding it ridiculous that I have decided, living in this body, to be a woman and because that is how I feel. We understand patriarchy to be something that every man resonates with. 
Why would we struggle with all men are trash if all men benefit from patriarchy and if our definitions of patriarchy allude to the fact that there's issues of power and dominance and decision making favoring men? When you say men are trash, it's here. Like it's here. You said it, you said it to me. You didn't say like there's patriarchy and people People do exactly that. They they personalized men are trash. Right. What I find ironic, especially with us as, as, as black men, yeah. is that we are very quick to shut down what women, especially black women, who are at the bottom of the I'm totem pole, right? The bottom. The bottom of the bottom. We're very quick to shut them down. Men are trash, not all men. But at the same time, it's been 23 years. Apartheid's over. Get over it. We're we so pissed. quick We're to go at white people tweeting. about like, hey. that. Like, but when a fuck? woman is saying essentially the same thing <laughs> to you, you don't want to hear it. I feel like a big reason a lot of men didn't like the men are trash hashtag is because they felt threatened. And also because they realized they've done a lot of these things that people are talking about. Listen, I'm not hurt by it. Do you understand what yeah. I'm saying to you? It doesn't right. hurt me. I'm in Ankara. Sure. Yeah, but sure. when I say to you, I'm not singing you, daddy. Why, why are you, why are you offended? Thing. No, hold on. Why are you offended by me saying to you that I'm not trash? Why do you feel that you have to correct me to such an extent so, that I must so. believe that I am trash? Men are trash hit a very sore point for a lot of men, and then they just didn't want to talk about it. And then everybody was just sulking in the corner because it hurts me to speak about the fact that men can be trash. And the fact that my father was trash, my uncle was trash. And that's the thing, a lot of people were going, yeah, but my father was a great parent. He was amazing. And I'm like, even if he was amazing to you, that man is more than just your father. Let me put it this way, right? You know there's a saying, an English saying, a birds of a feather flock together, one yeah. rotten potato spoils the whole bunch. It's never the one good potato makes the other bunch great. I'm part of the rotten the bunch, thing. but I'm not rotten. No, whoa, whoa, whoa. That's what wait, I'm saying wait, to you. Wait, wait. I'm not wait, rotten. Wait, wait, Fuck wait, that, wait, I care. And, and I get it, and I get it. But I think there's, there's still room for young girls who will grow up hearing that our men are trash men are this. this. There should be another voice that says, not all men. Think about the, the, the response to men are trash. Men are trash. Hi, yeah, 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 yeah. That's you, my pain. Unga zonchela. Some men. We are so sensitive. Not all men. So fragile. You, we are literally trying to protect our own sensibilities and our own sense of I'm a good guy, when in fact, women every single day are getting raped, kicked, and killed by people you know. People you literally know, people you meet in the office every single day. And then when women are on, on, on the timeline saying men are trash, you want to protect your ego. When the whole men, men, men are trash came up, and then it was broken down, and people were sharing stories, not just through social media, you would scroll through people's responses, and then also as a talking point, which you're engaging with your female friends as well. And when they're telling you the, uh, the experiences of day to day or specific situations, I think that's where you really start to understand why, why they have the struggles that they do, but even specific stories and when something happened to them, that's what really made me understand or, or, or to the best that I could understand. He raped me and I felt numb, like very numb, because a lot was taken from me at that time. How can this person, I felt my stomach turn and I, I, I started vomiting literally because I couldn't take it, you know? And when I was done, he threw me out, like out the yard and told me, this is what cause, this is what women like you, and that's, that's where they end up outside. And he threw me out and yeah. I'm better, like every time I would tell the story, I have a late sister and I would speak to her about it. Every time I would tell the story, I'd break down, but I'm better now and I'm in a better place, not with the environment, but with myself. I am strong. You must tell myself that I'm beautiful. If one of one good to me now, was only scrap. No, there's another man out there who appreciate me and my kids. My kids still need me. But I'm never strong for that. I'm not a loyal man. I go to war and I. I'm not cool as well as good. I'm fun and I'm not a little leggy. You need to tell yourself, what do I want with my life? If in case I don't feel like I want to have a miss over there, I go be. You must tell yourself. You must believe in yourself. When it is someone else, it is also you. In that moment, as women. 
and femmes, we need to like really think about the ways that we like form radical communities because right now we are failing big time when it comes to forming communities. Me and my girls can get together and have these kinds of conversations, twerk, and then continue these kinds of conversations. <laughs> so it's important to just have a community that holds you up and supports you. Gabriela Union did a post um, about um, uh, Kerry Washington um, um, and she said, I love who you are and I love the fact that when you see other black women do good work, you pick up the freaking phone and you tell them you are doing amazing work and you celebrate them. And I think that's the bit that's missing. Whoa, there's a lot of Harvey's in South Africa. But also I've had a director who, they needed to give me pyjamas and whatnot, and he needed to just approve the pyjamas on the, in the, you know, in the caravan of the, of the wardrobe. And then his first thing he opened and he said, oh my God, you have the most beautiful body. And I thought, I thought, how am I gonna be able to even go shoot this scene? My goodness. There's just, first of all, it's him now watching that lens with me in these PJs and then the boom guy, the DOP, that's the, the focus puller. Everybody is a man, you know? It's, and you just choke, you choke on just, you constantly feel like you're being, you know, being strangled. Like it's, it's so, so violating. What supports the violence is the small things we let slide, you know? How we talk about women, how, how, how we look at women, and we accept it. In a racist family, the, 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 one, who, the one who doesn't particularly un, uh, agree with the racism, if, if, they, if, they, if they don't comment on it, it perpetuates it. Like with OK Malumkan, Kukat, for yeah, exactly. instance, right? It's like, I can't play his music anymore. We I mean, I know you've always had a relationship with the homie. homie. You know, like there are so many people that I know in Bronfantino who look up to him. Fuck, I, I was that guy going to Kitcheners to see this homie and stuff. That happened. But here's the what thing. What do you here's do? The thing. No, no, if we're no, talking no, about calling culture no, no, for now real. He's, now he's done what he's done. Eh? Same as, say, the guy who's now beat up his, his woman. Yeah. I think but at that point, what you should have done, you should have done long ago. There has been. A, a very um, vibrant call-out cu culture from South African feminists of the things that have been happening for the past six months to a year. Mm -hmm. But it's about the fact that people don't care. Mm -hmm. The fact that a particular rapper was, he had his whole scandal with the sexual assault and so on, and you had feminists on Twitter calling out, because he was booked in Cape Town like the next week, calling out that establishment, calling out those promoters to say, how can you continue to do this? And because of that person, that one person's good conscience or not wanting to lose money, whatever it was, they decided to pull him from um, the lineup. But they continued, I mean, he's been, he's continued to get bookings. Another one was also, um, um, exposed for sexual assault, but he continues to get bookings. He continues to make videos. We continue to hear their music on the radio. So it really is about the power structures, but most particularly, it's about other men in the industry and how they continue to just support each other yeah. no matter mm -hmm. what. Yeah. And the thing with this, oh, gents, let's do right by our women, what? That thing happens for <laughs> August, maybe, and then we move on. But no one is gonna put their money where their mouth is. No one is gonna put their, um, you know, bro code, brotherhood, whatever's on the line mm -hmm. for this message that we really should stop hurting women. No man in South Africa is prepared to do that. And even though that we're speaking about these men who we all know who we're talking about, but no one's actually dropping the names. You know, that in itself is yeah. just what's really yeah, interesting. So she weren't mentioning Smiso. You weren't mentioning the other country. I don't know who you're referring to. You know? Yeah. Why aren't we dragging these yeah. names through the mud? I don't know who these people are. They can drag me too. It's fine. Look at the minister. How long did it take a group of men online to go, fuck this bullshit, the, 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 the government needs to do something, he needs to go. It took them four days. Four days to fire him. Four days. And even then he resigned. And even then he resigned. And even then he resigned. South African Twitter feminists can only go so far in calling out and demanding accountability. But if you decide that you actually don't care, we've seen, then things just continue as they are.
So it really is about men calling each other out. And I don't know if we'll ever get to a point where they do. One thing I do a lot, ooh, and this is beautiful as a black man, is speak about racism all day. Speak about racism. Racism this, white people this, white people that. When it comes to me, as a man, being an oppressor, it's like, but wait, 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 wait. This is not, wait, this is not what we're supposed to be talking about. We're supposed to be talking about race. And so something happens where he says something and I'm like, you're being racist. But as soon as a woman says, you're being sexist, I'm just like, but like, I'm, I'm busy here. We need to deal with this first before we can deal with um, the other thing. And yeah, so with call out culture, I feel like that is one of the like biggest places, even though it's such a small thing, it's one of the biggest places where you can be effective. We all dance to music about like men drugging women at parties and like having their way. And we're like, oh yeah, this song is so, like, like think about like the artists that come and headline here. They're the same artists that like consistently perpetuate the same things. And we like dance to it in the clubs and we buy their music and we support it. And it's like, we, we almost turn like an, an ignorant eye to like what's being said. That affects all of us. And it's like when we start tackling like what we consume and, and who we praise, that's when like we can start seeing changes. Because like why, why, yeah, like why are we listening to artists that like literally sing about raping us? It's, it's great to, be, to aspire to be successful and wealthy and powerful in your spaces, but that shouldn't be hand in hand with also taking dominance and power over the woman that you're singing to. We don't critique it enough. How do we think about this and address this problem? Should it be in terms of a humanistic way, like we're all in it together? And obviously I think we'd all say that we are all responsible. And then we can start thinking of, you know, patriarchy as a system which is actually not beneficial to boys and men, just as much as it's not beneficial to women and girls. And I think maybe if we start having the conversation in those ways, then maybe for boys and men, there'll be more at stake. There are losses for all of us. There are costs for all of us. Men are at the front in a privileged situation. The last thing they want to do, like very few people are, are able to be like, you know what, let me rather do the right thing. Let me, let me make myself equal, you know, when I don't even have to. There's not anything forcing equality. I mean, I guess in some places there are, but here, you know, there's still not, there's not anything forcing men to be equal. So in that sense, most men don't want to give up this privilege. I would want to give up those privileges because in me, there is vulnerability, a lot of it. But if I can't show it, how am I going to encourage my son to cry when he hurts? When he has never seen me as his father, demonstrate that. How am I even going to reach out to him and say, hey, buddy, I can see you suffering. But if he says to me, no, Teddy, I'm fine, he probably will be saying that because he has seen me refuse help even when he thought, damn, this man needs help. I had to force myself to make my own decision and understanding of what a man is. And till this day, I'm an emotional guy. Anything that warms me inside, I will shed a tear for it. And I'm proud to say that. But it doesn't make me any less of a strong person. You understand? In fact, it makes me an even better person. The biggest reason why we haven't gone far in this whole us trying to dismantle patriarchy is because it starts too late. I wish that we were taught for example, in life orientation about patriarchy, like learning the simple, learning the words, the concepts and the understandings of those, learning about gender, learning about sex. And like, it, we don't get taught that. We need a lot of men to help us to mobilize communities. We have seen men become so excited when they talk to men about where they can go for help. Um, but there aren't enough men reaching out. It's always women who are doing this work. If you were to give advice to men out there who are watching this, who are in an abusive space who are damaging themselves and their families what would you what advice would you give them i think the best advice is to get someone you can talk to like uh, even if it's a friend 
or someone close, or even if it's not someone close, like someone who wouldn't judge you, or someone someone you can just open up to. Because the, there's one thing I've picked up with me, like I never had anyone to talk to. It was just me, like, so I had no one. I couldn't even talk to my mom that I think I'm having a problem with this and this and that. I wouldn't tell the friends that I had, because obviously I just wanted to prove a point to them. So it was that stage of being in, a, in peer pressure. So I, there was no one to talk to. But if only maybe I had someone I could open up to and speak to, I don't think I would have been the person that I was. I think it starts with educating young boys, teaching them to relate to their masculinity differently. Maybe there's something that's wounded, something that is that needs healing, and I think we need to heal that first. Often when we talk about the patriarchy, um, we talk about it in relation to women, the way it affects women. It's really important to think about the damage that the patriarchy does on men. The expectations it puts on men to behave a certain way. And I think like once we heal that wound, then we can start to deal with gender-based violence because then we're dealing with the core of the, of the problem. I try to internalize patriarchy, and then it's easier for me to do call-outs. But I gotta admit, it's a job. It's, it's taxing emotionally because the system is so huge. From my own home, work, where I go, you get tired. You, you become... <laughs> A lonely person in this journey, sometimes you feel that way because people are, what's wrong with you? It's just a joke. No, it's not a joke. It's belittling this woman. How do we deal with that? I think to have continuous conversations, um, it, it's critical. So a lot of people don't take a stand because they're afraid of what people will say about them or they're afraid that it will bring up tension. And sometimes it's necessary to scrape off that wallpaper to reveal the tension that is hidden. Where I come from, like as a queer woman, you could be raped. We know like what happens in the township to gay women. So for me, it's like, there's like a conscious shift. Like I've moved myself into a space of privilege. And that's also, I mean, like I say, it's complicated. Like, it's not like, ah, oh, now I'm living in a white area, now my life's amazing. Like, living in this space, like, there's a whole lot of other issues you have to deal with. I'm not, like, in immediate physical danger. And, yeah, I mean, it's a tough thing to think about. I mean, like, personally, I almost feel like a, like a sense of, like, betraying my community. A lot of the LGBT movements actually helped us go beyond some of that, by which I mean they helped us move beyond identity in a slightly narrow way, like men, women, right? I mean, is this really a battle about men or women, or is it actually a much broader battle, which, is, which implicates a whole range of identities that don't fall in the binary? I, th I think it's just the whole concept of respect, the next human being, regardless of who they are, their gender. That's the thing about, about human beings, it's like, it's complicated, you know? You have to kind of like place yourself, like you have to find like how you stand in a situation. Sometimes you can, um, you can forgive a certain behavior and you don't want to, and then sometimes it's like, it's completely unforgivable. And I think like that's where we're standing in South Africa right now, if we think about Jacob Zuma, like, I mean, like it's unforgivable. When, um, for instance, it's about Oscar getting a more lenient sentence than what he should have gotten, people are able to critique the justice system thoroughly and say, guys, you know, there are um, 
you, uh, there are um, asymmetries when it comes to race and how people are prosecuted. Against it. People are able to notice that when it comes to stuff like that. But when it comes to people who have been accused of sexual assault, it's, you know, let the law take its course. Or, no, but he already did his time. Like, how long are we going to judge him for? Then we find every excuse under the sun to be like, no, but the justice system is a functional tool of society. So why are we fighting it? But when it comes to other things, people are able to see that our justice system is actually full of holes. Yeah, I think what really makes a difference here is the way governments act and the ways in which governments are able to legislate, bring in laws, bring in policies to actually effect uh, change. In the United States, you have very high rates of domestic violence and some of the, those end in the murder of the female partner. But we don't use explanations of culture. We call that domestic violence, right? But when it happens in India, we say it's because of a cultural practice, as opposed to saying it's domestic violence. And the problem with that is that if you don't name it as domestic violence, you don't have an appropriate policy response. I remember I talked to someone and they said, there was a couple here in this sports ground. And this guy basically was beating up his girlfriend. And um, he, he felt helpless. But something came to him and said, dude, just walk up to the guy and ask for a cigarette lighter. And by doing that, he had disrupted violence. You can interrupt violence without being in, 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 in that violent situation. Use your little voice, your little power. Just doing that simple action is enough in that moment. Young people are really out on the streets. I see that in a lot of contexts. You know, I see that here, I see that in India. I was just in Brazil where I went to this most amazing women's march. I mean, the energy was just out of control. And for me, what's really interesting about those moments is how young people are thereby connecting issues around sexuality, gender rights to broader issues. We live in fear every day. And it's fair enough, you guys all need introspection and you know, you need to take it in and work with it inside. At this point, we've got one in three women are being raped and that's not even a stat that's real. It's probably more than that. We've got women dying, children dying. It's scary, it's fucking scary. Men are not gonna do the work by themselves. No, they're not. Men they're are not. lazy motherfuckers who will not do the work exactly by themselves. We know exactly. this, <laughs> right? But on the other level, like, yeah. what does the personal cost to ourselves? Yeah. Yeah. And that's what I'm not willing to compromise on. <laughs> Showing men the statistics doesn't do anything because they don't think that they're part of the statistic. Yeah. Even us, even me, who says we care so much, we don't really care as much as we say we do, right? Because it doesn't touch, it doesn't touch my life. I'm fine, I'm a guy, I can perform masculinity when I need to. How do we get people to care who don't even want to listen in the first place? That's what I find is the most, like, difficult thing. What is the point of putting yourself through the fire to teach someone who doesn't want to learn something? Whereas they've got the world of information at their fingertips for everything else. Yes, there are a lot of people that, a lot of men, that perform all these fucking heinous acts and do all this rubbish. How do you become better than them? If you consider yourself Trash. We're in ourselves. We're rubbish. We're in tour. Let our chakus be fully surrounded. Other men stop being defensive when we say men are trash. Instead of you hanging on people's statuses and Twitter handles, what you can do is you can be an ally and educate other men on the various ways in which patriarchy um, advantages them, but in the way in which they dehumanize um, black women. Every day. The first step to moving for, forward is acknowledging that you are trash. That you as a man, no matter if you've never done anything bad to a woman ever, you know people and you have partaken in the types of thinking that murderers and rapists have partaken in simply by sitting around those coffee tables and those soccer matches and having those conversations with your boys. You don't think rapists are having those conversations. They are, dude. So within yourself and within your own immediate circle of men, you need to start introducing 
the idea that you men cannot carry on thinking like this. It's about the thinking. How do we deal with like racist white people? Yes. We don't go there, hold their hands, shame poor racist, let me like cure you of your racist ills. Fuck that. Like I'm gonna let you be in whatever town you're in and let you self-destruct and perish. And like, why must we now have a different approach to men who are violent? The only way that men could ever stop doing their shit is if they feel forced. Because they won't, there'll be no other reason why they will. Because the status quo is completely benefiting them and there's no way that they're gonna give up because they have everything. There are people that already think that the way that they do and there's no changing of their minds. I look at people that are like 70 years old and racist and there's, you're, you're not gonna change their opinions. It's the same thing with patriarchy now. So it's a matter of starting from a whole new generation. And I think that it's dealing with um, the people that are closest to you and then the things that you see. Culture evolves, so there's hope in that sense, culture changes. For me, again, it's about how are we reimagining ourselves, ourselves in relation to others and therefore our cultures, the cultures that exist amongst us, be it in our church spaces, be it in our family spaces, be it in our friendship circles. It might seem futile when you're saying it, when you're calling someone out or when you're sort of trying to do something good, um, but you never know what you're leaving people with. So, for me, it's just about repetition, you know? That's how Europeans got Africa. It took nine frontier wars to get into the Eastern Cape. They were like, we will get it, <laughs> you know? And, and, and they got in with repetition and changing people's minds about what they believed in. And if they could do that, culture changes. So can, so can we as men do that to other, with other men, I think. I'm interested in things like, you know, the women in Kenya who started a, a women-only village. I'm just like, yes, yes. That's, that's a vibe, you know? Because it's emotional labor to have to work on men and to have to tell men that this is how you hurt yeah. us. That's a lot of emotional labor. So if they, if they let them get well amongst themselves over there, while we over here have this fortress of love and, and mutual support. So that's what I'm just thinking about. The success of this film for me will be for one, ten, a million men to see the other side of patriarchy, how patriarchy affects us as men as well. Those men who are gender equitable, progressive thinkers, stand out. It will be the example. In, in my little corner, let me shine. I hope one day, my kids are going to talk about, have a conversation about, oh, you know, my mother said she saw this or this had happened to her. In all my adult life, this hasn't happened to me because there was a time that these people, at the time, we know what was going on to fight it, to enable it not happening to me. Do you know what I mean?